and for showing that little chunk of a film that's about the programs that I've been running for 25 years at Destiny Arts Center here in Oakland. Um, it's, always, it's always so humbling, you know, like I got nominated for this Tony Award and so I get to go to New York City and wear a fancy outfit and really what it's about for me is like at least what I've discovered is that it, it's just about continuing to be present in every moment. Every moment that I'm doing the work, I, I call. You know, it's not that I'm successful, usually I'm not, but I call for, I pray for, to be present. And the way that I do that is by being in my body. And really discovering and finding over and over again the wisdom of my body. And I think that's something that's, that's beginning to be part of the conversation. For artists especially, it's been the conversation. But to be the conversation in everything that we do. The body has to be part of it. And last night I was at this gathering of dancers, um, theater people, and climate change um, activists. And the climate change activists were like, we need a different narrative. I love that you talked about that as well. We need a different narrative and we need the dancers, not at the table, but in the room, on the, st on the stage, uh, in the studios. So I'm just so excited to be the first one to have you please stand. So put all your stuff down, if you will. I invite you to stand. And just plant your feet really strong and firmly in the ground. Close or lower your eyes. I invite, I invite you to do that. Place that gorgeous attention on your body. Right here, standing in this room. Just pay attention to it. I'm gonna read you a quote by one of our amazing leaders, young leaders of the Black Lives Matter movement, Alicia Garza. She says, the task is to try and live our lives in a way that we envision freedom looking like and feeling like. Just let that enter your body in this gorgeous space, this luxurious moment of quiet one more time, this visionary who has begun a movement to awaken our understanding of the value of black lives. The task is to try to live our lives in a way that we envision freedom looking like and feeling like. So just gently open your eyes and I invite you to just roll your shoulders in the space of that understanding. And then just whatever happens with your body once you've started to roll your shoulders, just start doing that, just move a little bit. If it, if it makes you laugh right now, come on, roll your hips, y'all. Come on, I dare you. I dare lots of people like, funders and um, business leaders and stuff to move their bodies. How do, we, how do we create something different if we're not in touch with our bodies? I mean, like I said, keep rolling. I said to this group last night, I said, um, you know, we've been living from the neck, you know, up for long enough, right? And I said, how's that, how's that working for us as a planet? You know, how's that working for us as community? Keep going. Come on, roll, yeah. It's harder to talk and do it, but I'm going to do it. How to role model that. Bend your knees a little bit. Now bounce a little bit. Just feel that bouncing feeling. There's so many pieces of our bodies that we forget when we do our work. And so if the task is to try to live our lives the way we envision freedom looking like on a screen and feeling like, then let's bring the body into that. But I want you to feel a little bit of something. Just feel and experience a little bit of what I've been working on for a long time. So just step touch a little bit with me, with a little snap. And my call today is really, and has been, I've sort of like gotten better at being succinct. I know the guy who teaches teenagers is like hard to be succinct. I teach teenagers, it's hard to be succinct. But um, I think I've gotten better at it at least a little bit. Now maybe throw a little hip into it, come forward, hey. Uh -uh. Because most of, most of what Wendy said, she's amazing. I'm like the opposite of Wendy. She can, like, she can get so much information packed into like 10 minutes, right? It's amazing. And I'm like, 
I got to move my body after that. I got to breathe and let it in, right? We got to breathe and let it in. Now come forward to me and then go back if you can. You know, small because you're behind a chair. So forward to me and back. Uh-uh, forward and back. Don't you feel like you're here now? Maybe you can hear something. Maybe you can learn something. Maybe you can work with something. Maybe you can um, get out of your shy mode and go talk to that funder. Go talk to them people. You know what I'm saying? She's like, go ahead and talk to them funders. It's like, okay, Wendy. <laughs> All right, girl. <laughs> I mean, I've been doing this for a long time and I'm still, I still get scared. You know what I'm saying? It's like, if we can be in our bodies, it's not as, a, it's not as scary. That's what my experience is. My experience is that if we're in our bodies when we do our work, then it's not as scary. And then we can actually do something different. Um, thank you for doing that with me. Um, Destiny, each year I, I um, co-produce and co-direct and co-write and co-choreograph um, an original performance piece. So you saw little bits of that um, with a group of teenagers and a group of professional artists. And this year we did a piece called Seed Language and it was um, using interviews from local and national activists and artists and visionaries like Alicia Garza from the Black Lives Matter movement, like Erica Huggins from the Black Panthers, like Tim Wise, who's a speaker around race and privilege, a white man. And we had the kids interview them, create monologues, and then, and then embody them. And there was some resistance because I do a lot of work with kids where I have them create their own stories, tell their own stories. Um, and this year I said, no, you're going to tell and embody other people's stories, the ones that are the visionaries now, and stand in the place of visionary. Stand in it, speak from it, and then it stretched them. You know what I mean? Like it stretched them because then they had to see themselves that way, that they are actually visionaries. And I think those of us who work with young people, it's like, you know, you're the, 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 fu you're the future. It's like, no, we're actually, they're the now. We're all the now. What do we have? All we have is this. All we have is this right now. All we have is this right now. I, I sat in front of a group of educators a few years ago and when I was the executive director at Destiny, thank God I'm now the artistic director and somebody else raises the money, but I love raising money now. I got like over myself and I love raising money because that's what it takes to do this work. So it's just joining hands with other people. That's all it is. But I sat in front of these sort of intimidating edu educator people and I, and I listened and, and I went through my layers of fear like, oh, what I have to say doesn't matter or whatever. And I got down to the core and I said, you know, I think what it's really about is love. And then everybody just went, hmm, or breathed or relax, like I could feel everybody's body change. I think that's kind of what I've based my work on for 25 years is waiting for our bodies to just relax and change and lean into the present moment. And then recently I thought, you know, as I um, have had my kids embody these visionaries and, and Alicia Garza just is so brilliant. She said that thing about envisioning, you know, being, feeling and living into what freedom looks like and feels like, that's, that's so brilliant. It's almost like if that's the only thing I can remember for the rest of my life, that would be good enough, you know? How can I continue to do that though? Like every single moment. So maybe, you know, when I brought up love with a bunch of, of high level educators, you know, and then the conversation went deeper and everybody got really excited and they landed in their bodies in this fearless way, or at least acknowledging the fear that existed, because God, how do we be fearless unless we know that we're afraid, you know? Because if we're so far up in our body, up here, and we're not feeling the fear, then we're, we can't actually be present. We can't actually be present. And it's really about being present because the present moment is where the love is. That's what I've realized, you know, that that's where the love is. This moment is where the love is. This is where the juice is. This is where the change can happen. This is where um, the sexy thing, the juicy thing. I call it sexy because it's like what's juicy is what people are going to be interested in. It's like I love, Wendy, what you said um, about let's not make it boring. And I think... 
Boring is sitting too long, for me anyway, as a kinesthetic learner, boring is sitting too long, but I think it's really for everybody. We've been sitting around listening to people and um, you know, now we get to be heard. I think that's, that's the revolution of the moment, but it's also just being here, like really just being here. What does that actually feel like, right? So I invite you before I leave, because I'm gonna like, I had to actually this morning, I said to my roommate, I'm like, I'm already like in New York City, like I have to, and I'm gonna do a talk about being in the present moment. And <laughs> it's like, okay, come on back to this moment right here. This moment is a sexy moment. <laughs> um, and so I invite you to turn to somebody next to you and just for like 30 seconds each, and I'll time you on either side, um, tell that person what it's like right now to be in this moment. Go, first person talk. <laughs> Thank you, and just notice, notice that you have more to say to perhaps a perfect stranger or somebody that you've known that's, that's maybe different. Just notice that there's more, that there's more that the, the present moment spills into deep creativity and deep connection and deep presence will give us the power to do whatever it is that we want, whether it's to create that film that breaks somebody's heart open or whether it's to um, continue to work with young people in a really deep and authentic way or to make music or to give people money in a way that feels authentic in partnership with the, the folks that you're giving money to and that there's partnership rather than a sense of disconnection. You know, that's the invitation. So thank you for having me, Wendy, so much. Uh, have a fabulous conference. I wish I could be here with you. I'll bring with you all with me to New York.